Hello and welcome to our latest release from the Reporting Hub, our June 2023 update version 6. My name is Brian and I'll be walking through the update today. We'll be going through all the latest and greatest new features. Uh, I'll go through each one one by one and you can see here on the screen we're showing you all the new features included in this release along with their corresponding subscription tier. Okay, let's get started. First up, we're going to look at the UI UX improvements made throughout the entire application, and this is available on all tiers. So right off the bat, you'll notice that the reporting of looks a little different. It's uh, a complete overhaul and refresh on all the UI and UX elements. You'll see all my kind of drop down menus, my navigation, my administrative pages. They're all uh, had a refresh and uh, update on the UI UX. So if you if you go through the app, you'll notice that it's just generally a more modern and clean layout. We are now supporting personal bookmarks as well. So if I jump into the app here and I navigate to an individual report page, you'll notice that I have a new feature here called user bookmarks. If I click on that, you see I have no bookmarks created at this point, but I can simply come and say new bookmark or add bookmark, excuse me, and I can name this whatever I want. You know, here's my bookmark. I can use this as my default if I wanted to. I can also make this public if I wanna push this bookmark out to all my users. I simply click save and then I can create that bookmark for myself. You can now add multiple Power BI embedded capacity schedules. And this is available also for all tiers. So to do this, I'm going to navigate to my Power BI settings page and on the previous version of the reporting hub, you could only add one schedule and that would allow you to start and stop your capacity based on that schedule. In our latest release, you can now add as many schedules as you would like. So you can see there's a add schedule button. I will click on that and you'll notice the UI looks a little different here. So I can say, you know, every morning at 7 a.m. I can choose my time of when I want that schedule to kick off. I can set the duration of that schedule, whether I want that to run for, you know, 10 minutes or an hour or whatever. Uh, I can enable or disable that schedule here as well. I click save and then I can add that to my schedule and then I can add multiple of these throughout the day. So if I have, you know, every hour if my I need my capacity on for my reports to refresh, I can add a new schedule every hour and that will trigger my capacity on based on that schedule. Another great new feature we've added is the ability to manage your Azure resource right in the reporting hub. So to do that, I'm going to navigate to my app settings here, which is under my main uh, administrative settings, app settings. And then from there, I have this new tab called Azure Metrics. And I will go to that page. And this is very similar to what's in the Azure portal. So uh, you are obviously always able to, you know, monitor your Azure resources from the Azure portal. But what we've done is we've made that reporting available in the reporting hub. And the use case here is you may have individuals who don't want to grant permission to your Azure portal, but they still want to be able to monitor your Power BI embedded capacity or your Azure app resource or your Azure app service, excuse me. You can do all that directly from the reporting hub now. So to do that, I simply select the, uh, the resource that I want to look at. In this case, I want to see my app service. I want to look at my response times. I can just simply click the refresh chart and I can look at that monitoring capability. Likewise, I can choose one of my capacities. Uh, I can see my utilization. I can look at that and I can manage my or monitor my uh, utilization right in the reporting hub. Next up, we're going to look at multiple theme layouts. So jumping to the app, if I go to my edit theme page, uh, and this is available only in the business subscription and up. So if I have a new section here called theme and layouts within my edit theme, within my uh, administrative panel. So prior to this update, there was really only one layout and that is what we were calling our classic layout now. So if you're an essentials customer, you'll still just see classic. If you're business and up, you will have the option now to select either modern or minimal. Um, and what those are are different application layouts and it's really just personal preference whatever you like uh, you can now choose and it just gives you more flexibility 
uh, to configure the application to your liking. So right now we're looking at the, uh, we are in the modern layout. So if I exit settings here, just to give you a quick overview, you can see that we have our header bar across the top here. We have our more modern layout. Our navigation here is these kind of cleaner uh, navigation selection items here. Of course, all these colors are configurable. All your fonts colors are configurable as per uh, the the uh, older release. Uh, but now we just have more uh, a diff slightly different UI. So if I go back to my edit theme, and now let's change this to minimal, you can see that I will have a different layout for my, my app. So you can see with the minimal layout, everything is kind of condensed to this left-hand navigation. So I'm gonna exit my admin area here and we can see that I have no longer have a header panel. All of that information is down here at the bottom. You can see that all of my uh, administrative kind of lists show up here. Uh, if I navigate to a page, I have a slightly different UI for my content management. All my report options here kind of show up on my, uh, on my left panel. Everything is just more condensed. I can minimize this and really maximize the page for my overall Power BI content is really kind of what minimal is meant to accomplish for those that want to really maximize that content page. So with again, with that under edit themes, we have all these great new features and uh, definitely would uh, like you to explore seeing what uh, which one you like best. We now give the ability to switch between tenants based on uh, specific user permissions if you've granted to do so. So if I go back to the app right now and you can see my user is logged into this main tenant and tenants are nothing new in the reporting hub. Uh, the reporting hub has always been a multi-tenant application. So if I go into my app settings here, you know, I have my, all my different tenants listed here. Now, depending on which tenants I grant user permission to, that user can now switch between those tenants and that's what's new so if i click on my user profile here you can see my user actually has been granted permission to two distinct tenants uh, and it will pick up the favicon logo for each tenant that uh, that shows in my user tenant section in my uh, administrative drop down now i can set which tenant i want to be my default so that means whenever i log in i'm going to log into that specific tenant and i can just jump between tenants by clicking on them the highlighted uh, rep represents which tenant I'm actively in. And if I want to change my default tenant, I simply just click this button and it will change my default setting. Uh, and I can jump back and forth very easily. So again, this only applies to users that have been granted permission to have access to multiple tenants. Uh, and the neat thing is as well is your permissions will be honored depending on which tenant you're in. So if your user has you know, global admin permission in one tenant, but content administrator in one tenant and maybe just basic user permission in another, when you flip to that tenant, you will have the permission associated with that tenant. Another feature we're really excited about is the ability to schedule the delivery of emailed reports. Uh, this is a feature that many customers have been asking for and we're really happy to be able to uh, bring it to you. So uh, to do that, well, let's navigate to an individual report page. So I'm going to my sales dashboard example here. Under my report options, I now have the ability to schedule an email. So to do that, I simply click scheduled email. I can choose my export type. So in this case, we're gonna do PDF. I can choose my export parameters. So all pages with filters applied without, etc. I can set my frequency. So in this case, I wanna deliver a monthly email. I can put who this email is to be delivered to, what the su email subject is, when I want this to start, when I want this schedule to end. I can put my copy here, you know, hello, here's your monthly, uh, here's your monthly email. Uh, and then I click save and that will create this schedule for me. And that email is going to be delivered with your corporate logo that you've identified here in the top corner. So that email is going to have your the subject as well as the report title. And it's also going to include a button that allows the user to navigate directly back to the reporting up to that specific report. So it gives our customers the ability to push content to users, but also promote them back to the reporting up through that manage to navigation uh, button. Which is really which is a really neat feature now to enable all this we need to go into our app settings here you'll notice there's an smtp setup page where you can do that setup to, to make sure you're uh, it's coming from the correct email and then 
all your scheduled tasks will show up in this scheduled task feature here on this page here, excuse me. You'll have all of your different schedules that you can edit and add to and make changes to or cancel. Uh, as an administrator, you have uh, access to that as well. So on multi-tenant environments, we're now providing the ability to customize the domain for each specific tenant. So if I go to my application settings here, and here's all my tenants. Um, so previously, if you were to create a tenant in the reporting hub, uh, you really didn't have any ability to change the domain of that tenant name. So if I was creating a new tenant here, you know, I'm saying new tenant, uh, and then you'll see that in the new version, it at least tells me what the URL domain of that tenant is. So this is the default standard URL for each tenant that's created. So your kind of, you know, your URL slash account slash tenant slash whatever your tenant name is here. Now you may want to customize that. So now uh, the new feature that's being made available here, and again, this is only available for commercial uh, commercial subscriptions, you can now actually customize this. So you still need to do the DNS and, and all that domain setup on your own side and, and make sure you have that domain purchased and all the rest. So once you've done all that setup, you just simply need to come in and, and type in that uh, domain here. So and it's that simple. And then that will then direct your users who access this domain will be directed specifically to this tenant. So it gives you a, another degree of customization. So those running multiple tenants where you have unique customers maybe on specific, uh, you know, specific app tenants, you can now create a custom domain for that tenant as well. The reporting hub now supports service principal profiles. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to my app settings here under my global tenant, I'm gonna go edit. And you'll, there's a new feature here, and this is for commercial subscriptions only. So you'll see this uh, uh, toggle here if you're a commercial subscription. It says enable service principal profile. So if I have this enabled, every time I create a new tenant, it will create a unique service principal profile for that tenant. I can disable it if I don't want to use that. In this case, I'm gonna leave it on. So when I go and create a new tenant, it's gonna then create a unique service principal profile. I also have the ability here to automatically create a workspace in Power BI. So the reporting hub will actually create a, a corresponding workspace in Power BI for me that's associated with that service principal profile uh, ID. Now I don't have to do that. I can leave it off if I wanna create my uh, workspace by myself or manually and then apply the profile after. Uh, it's, up to, it's up to you how you wanna use this. Uh, if I go to a tenant that already has this set up, if I go, you'll see that after I've created it, it gives me this service principal profile ID uh, that shows me that this is a unique service principal profile associated to this tenant. Last but definitely not least is dynamic binding. So to do this, we're gonna go to our manage content. Uh, we wanna click and create a new content page. So this is my gonna be my dynamic binding report that I'm creating here. And dynamic binding really represents the latest and greatest from Power BI. So I have the option now to turn on dynamic binding or enable dynamic binding if I have a commercial subscription. So I'm gonna turn that on. You can see two new fields open up to me. So if I'm not using dynamic binding, I'm just simply selecting my report workspace and then choosing my report. If I am using dynamic binding, I have the ability now to to choose a different uh, workspace for my data set and then select my data set. So in this case, I'm gonna choose my, I already have kind of a, an example set up. So I'm gonna choose my report for my shared workspace, which is my, you know, my common report to be shared or be to be dynamically bound to different data sets. So now I wanna choose the uh, workspace where my data set resides. So in this case, I'm gonna choose this workspace and I'm gonna choose this data set to dynamically bind to. So it's literally that simple to use dynamic binding in the reporting of now. So when I've done this, I fill out the rest of my properties here, I click save, and what this is, is this report is now gonna dynamically bind to this data set.
So with that, that really represents what we're coming out with new as far as this new release goes. So we hope you're excited about everything that you've seen today. Uh, if you want to get started with this update, you can install the update now and, and get started with all these great new features. And if you have any questions, you can, of course, reach out at any time. Thanks, and uh, we look forward to speaking with you.